How often do you check Instagram or Twitter? Often? Do you think these things require a lot of effort? Probably not. Personally, I can spend hours scrolling on Instagram. Even after seeing most of what the platform has to offer, I might refresh the page several times. Why is it so much easier to spend hours on social media or get lost in a game rather than working on a report with a looming deadline or studying for an upcoming exam? When it comes to doing other things, like reading or writing, it feels like a struggle. You often notice that you can't focus, you drift away, or you even get tired. You are consciously aware that finishing a task for work or studying for an exam is the right thing to do. But spending hours in another universe that gives you pleasure seems more appealing. Yes, it's a bit of a controversial topic. Here comes the critical question. Can we really trick our brain into enjoying things we don't want to do? Have you ever wondered about the secret behind other people's productivity or success? Have you ever felt discouraged when people around you talk about how many books they've read or mention their goals? Or are you still stuck on chapter 3 of the book you bought two months ago? In both our work and study lives, there are times when we feel overwhelmed and don't want to do anything. Yet even in this mindset, we can easily and happily browse social media or immediately start a new series on Netflix. But why? To find the answer, it's worth taking a look at our command center, our brain. Remember, those who control their brain control their life. Unfortunately, our brain doesn't make being productive easy. Its job is to protect itself by following the path of least resistance and risk. This means that it prefers scrolling through Instagram over starting a difficult math test, and it enjoys that more. Rather than challenging your brain, you tend to do things that make you feel comfortable or are easy. The more you choose these easy paths, the more you'll find that you can't focus even on your daily tasks. This is because you've trained your brain to love comfort, whereas the discomfort you feel in your brain is the moment when growth and development happen. We've made our diagnosis and drawn a picture of our brain. Now, I'd like to get to the main point I want to discuss, making boring tasks more enjoyable. There are a few strategies that can help you find some enjoyment in seemingly dull tasks and trick your brain into liking them, but we'll need to dive a bit deeper to explore them. First of all, it's useful to understand how our brain works. Our brain is constantly seeking rewards. When it receives a reward, it feels happy, and when it feels happy, the task stops being boring. Even something as simple as a like you get on social media is considered a reward by the brain, and it releases dopamine as a result. There are many different experiments conducted on rats and monkeys regarding this. When one reward surpasses the previous one, the dopamine release increases and the body craves more, similar to addiction to alcohol and drugs. Dopamine is what makes you desire things. It's what makes you reach for your phone with sleepy eyes in the morning to check Facebook. It boosts your mood, motivation, and focus. The reason you feel unmotivated to work might not be your laziness. Or we could say that laziness plays a very small role in it. It's likely that you've developed an extremely high tolerance for dopamine and your dopamine receptors are impaired. Activities like reading, writing, or anything you currently find difficult may not provide the same dopamine levels as watching TV or scrolling through Instagram. Your brain doesn't care that the levels of dopamine you're consuming could be harmful, it just wants more. So, what's wrong with having too much dopamine? Our body has a biological system called homeostasis. This means that our body likes to maintain an internal physical and chemical balance. Whenever there is an imbalance, our body will adapt to it. Essentially, when your brain gets used to high dopamine levels, these levels become your new normal, which forces you to create a tolerance for dopamine. Since you're getting high dopamine from other things, doing everyday tasks will inevitably become impossible for you. Beyond that, it may become even harder to read, write, work, or improve yourself. Have you ever wondered why you can't stop watching Netflix even though you know you have work to do? Why is it so hard for addicts to quit drugs? It's possible to balance dopamine levels and even trick our brains into enjoying hard things again. This is where a weekly dopamine detox can be very beneficial. For one day, avoid everything that gives you pleasure and activates your brain's reward center. By doing this, you reduce dopamine release, and even a boring task the day after the detox will likely give you more enjoyment. You can be sure that a meal eaten by someone stranded on an island, starving for days, will give them far more pleasure than a meal eaten by a millionaire who dines at the world's best restaurants every day. Of course, dopamine alone may not be the cure for everything, but it's clear that it plays a crucial role by activating the reward center in our brain. One thing is clear, we need to change the way our brain perceives the world. 
To do that, we must try to activate the brain's reward center and increase dopamine release in tasks that are necessary and beneficial to us. You must focus on the process, not the outcome. Short-term dopamine is more appealing than long-term dopamine. Seeing a like on social media or watching a funny video provides short-term dopamine, while working produces long-term dopamine. That's why the brain often prefers short-term dopamine because it's quicker to access. For example, say you're preparing for an exam by taking practice tests and the exam is a year away. Since it's impossible to see results immediately during the study process, focusing on the activities you'll do in the process rather than the goal itself is smarter. This way, you can release short-term dopamine. Breaking a task into smaller parts allows you to focus better and continue the process. If you don't break down the task or the process leading to your goal and the task takes a significant amount of time to complete, your motivation to continue will diminish. However, if you break it into parts, each time you complete a part, you'll experience the satisfaction of finishing a task. You can also apply this technique when memorizing something. If you're doing a task, you should make it more appealing. For example, you could use a fancy notebook to write down the steps toward your goals. When you finish a step and cross it out with a red pen, you'll feel satisfied. As those red lines increase, you'll become even more hooked on completing the steps. As I said earlier, those who control their brain control their life. The most important trait that separates successful people from unsuccessful ones is that successful people keep going without getting bored or tired, or they find ways to make their journey more enjoyable. Foolish people complain constantly and hate the work they do. Smart people enjoy their work, while geniuses make their work enjoyable. Redesign your environment to complete the task you want to accomplish. Be aware of the dopamine hormone. Everything around you should remind you of the process leading to your goal and entice you to take action. If a flower doesn't bloom, would you blame the flower or its environment? In reality, each of us is that flower. But when we don't grow or blossom, we need to ask ourselves these questions. What kind of environment are we in? Who are we talking to? What are we looking at on social media? What is your mind constantly filled with from your feed? When you change the answers to these questions, you can be sure that your life will change and that flower will bloom. Thank you for listening, my friend. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and want to stay updated, subscribing would provide us with great support. We love you. Take care until we see you in the next video. Goodbye.